Assalamu alaikum. Uh, the question I had is, uh, are we allowed to live in a non-Muslim country, especially one that does not follow Muslim laws, but another religion's laws? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Once again, we go back. You see, uh, dear brothers and sisters, again, I have to go into some detail here. The majority of American Muslims are children of immigrants, right? All of you that I can see are basically children of immigrants. Alhamdulillah, we have a good, you know, around 30% African Americans who are basically here for much longer than myself and many of us here. We need to understand the Islam that we were taught was influenced by the culture of the people that came from the lands that they came from, whether it was Egypt, whether it was India, whether it was Pakistan, the type of Islam that was culturally influenced. So back in the 60s and 70s, those people that came here, their local ulama, their clergy were like, Astaghfirullah, you're going to America, that is the Darul Kufr, and how can you go there and this and that? So they began thinking that they're not allowed to be here. But you see, when you look at the text, when you look at the Quran and Sunnah, you don't see these types of, of, of cultural uh, understandings of Islam. In fact, there's an authentic hadith in the uh, in a book of hadith called the Sahih ibn Hibban, where a person converted in a faraway tribe, and his whole tribe was not Muslim, and he was the only Muslim. Somebody passed through the tribe and said to him, "Hey, your Islam is not valid because you're living amongst the kufars. You're living amongst the you know the the kafirs." So he got so worried, he traveled all the way to Medina, Subhanallah, and he said, "O Messenger of Allah, somebody came to me and said." my Islam is not valid unless I leave my people who are not Muslim and live amongst people who are Muslim. And our Prophet wasallam said that, oh so and so, pray, establish the prayer and give the zakah and live with your people wherever, you, wherever they are. Now from this we can explicitly derive that as long as a Muslim is not forced to commit shirk or kufr, and as long as a Muslim is able to practice the rituals of the faith, as for temptations, they're everywhere. Do you really think there's gonna be no temptations back home? Temptations are part and parcel of life. As long as you're not forced to compromise your values, it is permissible for you to live. Now whether you choose to live or not, that is up to you. There's no question you are free to, to uh, weigh the pros and cons wherever you want to live. But from an Islamic perspective, there is no prohibition of living in a land uh, that is not a Muslim land. Also, by the way, there is no land of Islam anymore because the land of Islam means that if you are a Muslim, you automatically have citizenship in that land. If there was a theoretical, hypothetical caliphate somewhere, the fact that you're a Muslim, you automatically can apply to go and migrate and say, hi, I'm a Muslim, I deserve to be in this land. There is no country in the world that is a Darul Islam anymore. You have Muslim majority countries. No country is actually judging by the laws of Islam in any ways. So in reality, the system that uh, our books of fiqh found and they talked about for many hundreds of years, for a millennia actually, no longer exists. We live in a very different world. We live in a nation state world. We live in a post Khilafah world. Because of this, we do need to rethink through even some uh, rulings that might have been found many centuries ago. And therefore in our times, the vast, vast majority of scholars who understand the modern dynamics that we live in, they say that a Muslim may live wherever they have the freedom to practice their religion, just like the Muslims at the time of Mecca migrated to Abyssinia, even though it was a land of Christians, because the Prophet ﷺ said, in it is a king that will allow you to worship Allah. Notice that is the condition, right? There must be the, the, the freedom to worship Allah. You should not be persecuted for being a Muslim. If you cannot pray and you cannot fast and you're forced to worship false false gods, then if you're able to migrate, you must migrate. If you cannot migrate in that situation, you're forgiven. But if we have the freedoms that we do in America, well then, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those freedoms, and we have every right to live here if we choose to do so. <laughs> حول خليله روحا وريحانا بقولك كون